guys to this FSS Technum P2012 tutorial regarding the FMS keyboard, which is located down here. We're going to show you the different input modes and how to control different functions on the displays using the keyboard. The keyboard has four main input modes, which are FMS, COM, NAV, and Transponder. We're going to start with the COM mode first. If you enable the COM mode, you have control of the COM1 or COM2 standby frequency. In our case, you can see COM1 is standby is selected. And the only thing you need to do in order to change the frequency is type a new frequency in. If you put in all six numbers without any dot in between, you will have a new frequency. You can activate this frequency from standby to active by simply clicking the swap button. If you want to do the same for COM2, you need to press the COM button a second time and the selection will switch to COM2. Now the same thing, you can put in a new frequency it's going to be selected on standby and you can swap it to active. Same applies to the nav button. If you press it once, you're generally in the nav mode. And as nav1 standby is selected, you can now start to type in a new frequency. In this case, five digits without the dot in between. And you can also put it into active by pressing the swap key. Same for NAV2. If you want to switch to that, just click the NAV mode button again, and it will give you NAV2 pre-selected. Now, if you want to change the COM frequency again, and you want to change COM1, although COM2 is currently selected, you need to do two things. First, press the COM button in order to switch into the COM mode in general and then a second time to get into the COM1 selection. The transponder mode allows you to change your four-digit transponder code. Simply click on it and again type in your new code. Four digits and it will automatically be activated. If you want to change the frequency, uh, the uh, selection again, just press on it and type in a new transponder code. You can also use the item button here or on the G1000 PFD, left or right, whatever you like. Now, we also have the FMS input mode. This allows you to enter um, waypoints or airports through the keyboard into your flight plan. Let's create a flight plan by entering a departure and a destination airport. In order to get into the selection, you need to right click on the button, on the inner, uh, on the smaller button, and then navigate to the input selection of your origin. And now the important thing is, in order to get into the actual input selection, you need to rotate the smaller knob once. Now we are in the waypoint selection, and now you simply press FMS to tell the keyboard that the following input should be um, input into the, into the um, flight plan field, which is selected, and now we can put in our airport, press enter, we could select a runway, let's take 07, and here we go. Same for the destination, we can take Zurich, for example, press enter, no runway, and we are good to go. 
Now, remember, we keep the last um, input mode until you change it. So if you want to change the COM frequency now, and you would simply start typing in, nothing will happen to the COM frequency because we're still in the FMS mode. You can see it, but it's still the one that we have selected the last time. So you would need to press on COM again, and then you can put in a new frequency. Okay, you can also use the keyboard input for a direct, for example, that's quite handy. So you press on the direct button, press the FMS button, and you enter, let's say, I don't know, that one, for example, and here we go. The last thing is the range and cursor uh, control knob. You can use it to change the range. That's obvious. And you can also use the cursor to navigate around the map by right click on the knob. You will see the cursor active. And now you can drag it around if you want to have a look around at the map. To get back into the default view, just press right click again and it will be centered back. That's all about the FMS keyboard. If you want to have more detailed information, you can have a look into our online documentation. We will post the link below. Until then, I wish you a great flight with this aircraft.